The following program is made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melee Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture. I'm Michael Clark for Meet the Farmer TV. Today we're going to send you to our Culpeper correspondent, Nancy Halgren, and she's going to go to Randolph Elementary School in Goochland County, where a sweet potato farmer is participating in a special program from the farm to the school. We'll speak to the principal and also Leanne Dubois of VDAX. So Nancy Halgren, take it away. Ready? Go. Good morning from Randolph Elementary School. Let's give a Randolph welcome to Farmer Mike. Thank you very much. I appreciate the chance to be here today. All right, how many people love sweet potatoes? Wow, that's great. That's excellent. One thing you probably didn't know, or you might know, but sweet potatoes is one of the two best things you can possibly eat has a lot of vitamins, a lot of nutrients, and it's really good for you. The only thing better for you than sweet potatoes is broccoli. Yum. How many people love broccoli? Really? Wow, that's great. So y'all love the two best foods there are for you to eat. That's excellent. So almost everything you can think of, except for oranges or tangerines or grapefruits or, or things like that, are grown here in the state of Virginia, somewhere in the state. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am, you in the green shirt. Was it really hard to grow the vegetables? Is it really hard to grow vegetables? Is it like really hard after for a year to grow like all the vegetables? The question was, was it really hard to grow vegetables? And the honest answer is yes, it's really hard. And some days I think, why am I doing this? Yeah, it's, it's hot, it's cold, it's wet. Like yesterday, we were cutting kale and collard greens, and it was 40 degrees and raining and mud up to your ankles. And my hands were cold, my feet were cold, but that's what we do. But then there are days like today that are really a lot of fun. And one thing about farming that y'all might not know, so it's real, you might want to be a farmer one day, but it's really important that to be a farmer, you have to know science, math, English, engineering, and to be a pretty decent mechanic. Because you have to do those things every day. You have to use those skills, and so it's really important whether you become a farmer or not, but to learn those things. But not many people realize that you have to be a mathematician or know math to be a farmer. But it certainly does help. Thank y'all very much. Let's give them a big hand. How many people at this table, hey ladies? How many people at this table like their sweet potatoes? Who all has tried their sweet potatoes? Me. All right. What do you think? Delicious. Awesome. Delicious. Delicious. Now, do you all eat sweet potatoes at home? Yes. And what do you think of having fresh Virginia produce on your school lunches? That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to see more of that kind of food on your school lunches? Yes. Here's someone eating sweet potatoes right now. What do you, what do you think? I think they're very good. Oh. Do you eat sweet potatoes at home? Yes. eat sweet potatoes. How many people have tried their sweet potatoes? Oh. How many people would like to see more Virginia fresh produce on their lunches? We're here today with Lisa Landrum, who is the supervisor of uh, nutritional services for Goochland County Schools. Mm -hmm. And she has just produced a wonderful day here at Randolph Elementary by bringing fresh local produce to the cafeteria uh, lunches. So, Lisa, would you tell us about your wonderful day? Well, um, we decided to start with the month of March during Governor Kane's National Agriculture Week to bring in fresh produce. Um, what we found were fresh sweet potatoes that we brought in from Pungo, Virginia, which is right uh, outside of Virginia Beach. Um, we came up with a recipe 
and we prepared them and served them to the students. Um, we made sure everybody got to taste them. Uh, we had some wonderful handouts to give the students with some fun nutrition facts on them. Um, we had stickers, uh, we had a poster done of the farmer, we had the farmer come and speak with the children during each lunch. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled. I thought it went really, really well. What made you start thinking about getting local produce <coughs> into your school lunches? Well, it just makes, it just makes sense. Um, you know, like say in the fall, you know, why shouldn't we have Virginia apples? in our schools in the fall. It just, the taste um, is such a treat. Um, you know, just the, the whole thing. The, you know, the students will benefit from it. Uh, our farmers will benefit from it. And we're hoping to do our part with the local economy. Are you planning um, any future meals with local uh, food? Yes, we are. Um, in April, we're going to do organic beef from a Goochland farm, and I think that's going to be really big. Um, for May, we're trying to find fresh strawberries, which would be a real treat for the students. If we can't get the strawberries, we'll do salad greens. And for next school year, I'm hoping to be able to expand. You know, right now I'm just kind of feeling my way around to see what's available, um, what kind of pricing I can get, because we do have to stay within a limited budget. So, in the organization of this day, um, did you have help? Oh, yes. Yes, I could not have done this alone. Um, I had uh, Jocelyn Daly, who is a county extension agent and 4-H coordinator, who prepared the handouts for the students. Um, she actually, she did the posters and she put me in touch with Leanne Dubois, who was the marketing director over the Farm to School programs. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she was, has just been invaluable, and through the Extension Office, I also met Lisa Dearden from the Center for Rural Culture, and Molly Harris, who is owner of Edible Gardens Restaurant and Fall Line Farms Co-op. She has also been invaluable to us. Um, she has kind of scouted the food out for us that, that we're going to be serving. Um, she's handling all the paperwork, uh, the delivery schedule type thing, so really all I have to deal with is the invoice. Nice. So, I mean, that's been, you know, so helpful. Nice. Now, everyone I've talked to that, you know, <coughs> knows what we're doing after I explain what we're doing, there's, you know, everybody just pitches in and it's just, you know, really wonderful. As I told you before, it's a, it's a win-win-win situation. Nice. I really think so. Is there um, anything that you would like to tell us that um, I maybe haven't thought to ask? What I'm hoping with the farmers coming in, you know, and talking to the kids about agriculture and then the cafeteria's nutritional handouts that, you know, we're helping in the education process for the students. I, I think you've mm -hmm. done a great job. It's been a Thank wonderful you. day. And the sweet potatoes were delicious. Weren't they? They were. I'm proud of it. <laughs> Thank you. We're here today with a real farmer, Mike Colifer. Can you tell us about your farm and what you grow on it? We're located in Virginia Beach and we have roughly 250 acres. We grow about 70 acres of fruits and vegetables, produce. We have about 125 acres of grain just for rotation. And we grow 65 or so different types of produce, everything from asparagus to zucchini squash and most everything in between. Um, I like to tell people we grow a whole lot of we grow a lot of everything, but a whole lot of nothing. And we don't, we don't have a huge acreage of, um, I guess our biggest crop, single crop would be sweet corn. We grow about 20 acres of sweet corn. And then, you know, four, five, six acres of just of everything else. Um, all your garden variety of, uh, of fruits and vegetables that you would think of here in Virginia. So how did your sweet potatoes get here to Goochland County to Randolph Elementary School for today's lunch? <laughs> it's kind of like an odyssey of how, how our potatoes got here. Um, we, like I said, we, we grow a, a wide variety of, of crops and sell most of them through our farm market. But there's uh, a couple who live in Southampton County, Dave and Dee Shear, who grow oyster mushrooms. And they're real, they've been real instrumental and they sell to restaurants. And so they buy produce from local in-state growers and we've been selling to them since they started 
and one of the ladies that they sell to here in Richmond has become a very strong advocate of locally grown sustainability, trying to buy in-state Virginia grown um, products. And so I guess you'd call it third-hand party that we ended up here at, at Randolph Elementary School today. And we feel, feel very fortunate. It's, uh, it's, it takes extra effort on everybody's part to get the food and especially now in, in school systems with the the prescribed menus it's not like it was when we were children that the cafeteria manager can make decisions and things were prepared by you know from scratch so to speak that a lot of preparation is done outside the school systems now so we feel very fortunate that our potatoes got up here today oh nice you know that that's one of the things i found working with farmers and the different groups and meeting people, it's like a, a pebble dropped into the pond and all of the associations and connections just sort of keep growing. I, I, it really is. It, I, network may not be the right, right term, but th there really is a, um, a web, if you will, of, of contacts. And, and the thing that we found is that you know, if people can specialize and do what they do best, then, and everybody's happy with that arrangement, then it works out fine. Um, like I said, Dave, Dave and Dee do a, spend a lot of time marketing and making contacts, and that takes some of the burden off of us, and that we can do what we do best, and we, we can grow and produce, produce fruits and vegetables. And I think one thing to keep in mind for, for people that the buy local, buy fresh, you know, eat things grown in your area and buy local is the biggest term. You know, it, it's certainly uh, just a, tr a tremendous concept and, and, it's, and it's being practiced quite a bit. We've noticed in the last couple of years at our farm market that people, you know, really making a conscious effort to find out where the, where the produce came from. And a lot of, a lot of markets you know, um, don't grow anything that they sell in right. a farmer's market. Some of them are more strict than others. but. But part of the process is that people educate themselves on what is in season. That you, know, you can't, unless it's a greenhouse grown tomato, you won't go anywhere in the state of Virginia and find a, a field grown tomato, you know, except for the months of June through November. And like I said, it, it's um, you know, hothouse grown, yes, but not, not a tremendous commercial production. So that people need to educate themselves on what is local and be understanding is that you know you can't get Virginia grown strawberries except for maybe three months out of the year and people are doing a lot of things with season extensions with growing them in hot houses and in greenhouses and things like that but by and large you know we're limited to our seasons here and the seasons change and most people live in Virginia whether they were born here or relocated here for the seasons and so that you know, we like to see the, the leaves change, and like to see the, the grass green up in the spring. But you need to keep in mind that that our produce changes mm -hmm. with the seasons, and, and be mindful of that. And the, the last thing I'd say is that sustainability is a big word or, or a blanket term used now throughout society. I guess not only talking about farming, but sustainability of, of production and. Um, manufacturing and the green industry if you will but sustainability not only deals with the land and our environment but it also deals with the ability for farmers or us as a viable business entity to remain profitable and to stay in business that sustainability is a, is a twofold uh, has a twofold definition and we hear a fair a, a fair number of people when they come to purchase something at, at, our, at our farm market, will say, well, you know, I can buy that for 25 cents cheaper or 50 cents cheaper in the grocery store, at Food Line, Farm Fresh, U Crops, right. Kroger, whatever. And I say, yes, you're exactly right. But chances are that wasn't picked yesterday or it wasn't picked this morning. And so therefore that goes back to, you know, a lot of our prices are reasonable, but we need to make a profit right. to, to, to be sustainable and like I have two children and two nephews and I hope at least one of them will like to continue farming but we have to have a profitable business that not many people will continue 
will maintain a business and continue in a business just to break even. Because right. it's, it's, it's just a tremendous amount of work and, and, and stress to, when you're dealing with the weather and, and what Mother Nature has in store for you to just break even. And so, you know, like I said, you know, nobody is in farming to get rich that I know of. You want to make an honest living, and mainly it's about a lifestyle for that person and his or her family. But like I said, those, those are the things that I'd like to add. Good. I, you know, I, I, I've often thought that farmers should be given uh, some sort of benefits of just preserving the open space, the green, you know, because the bumper stickers that say once farmland is gone, it's gone forever, is very true. That. And pointing out things like it takes 500 years to make an inch of topsoil uh, also, I think, stops, I, I makes people think about it. You, know, you, you look at my, my degree uh, from college was in soil science, and so you look at from the state of Virginia, from Richmond to the valley, and including the valley, is some of the oldest landscape in the world. I mean, it's four or five million years old. It now, where, where we live, it's only about 20,000 years old. But you, know, you think that what we have here in the Piedmont and the foothills, you know, took several million years to make. Yeah. And you know, it can be, I hate to use the word destroyed, but it can be severely altered in a matter of months. Absolutely. Is um, is is just just tremendous, and so people people don't re don't realize that, or they have forgotten. You know, most right. people, you know, have a reasonable working knowledge of things, but you you, you tend to forget sometimes what all is involved with that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for talking with us. Thanks for having me. And I'm here today with Leanne Dubois, who is manager of direct marketing for the Virginia. Department of Agriculture, and she is also the coordinator for the state program of Farm to School. Hi, Leanne. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Can you tell us about the uh, program of Farm to School? Sure. Um, the Farm to School program was actually um, signed by state legislatures. It a, a, was a joint state senate resolution mm -hmm. in 2007. And what that did was just show support for the Farm to School program in Virginia. There, ha there are other states that have adopted Farm mm -hmm. to School program as well. And what that did is basically set this, the Secretary of Department of Agriculture as well as the, Depart the Secretary of Department of um, Education to kind of come together and start looking at the possibility of how to implement a farm to school program in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they uh, formed a task force and the task force was made up of distributors, farmers, Department of Education, nutrition directors, uh, a number of other um, key people to, to kind of come together at the table and they wrote a, uh, a report basically showing how uh, farm to school program would be work would work in Virginia, oh, cool. and there there was no um, money put towards that. It was more just how to implement it uh, mm -hmm. statewide. And we maintain a website on the Department of Agriculture's um, oh. website. Okay. And so we're here today in Goochland to sort of uh, have the kickoff at uh, Randolph Elementary School. How many other programs are there in the state that you're aware of that are actually bringing local produce to the school lunch table? Well, that's a good question because uh, the beauty of this program is that it's really a grassroots effort and it just takes you know, one person to start the movement in their own community and every community is very unique as well. And so I was involved in one in Williamsburg um, and then Goochland and there are different institutions that are involved and Shenandoah Valley is also involved in the program but there may be others out there that we are trying to you know keep in touch with so may basically they could work uh, be a model for other communities thinking about it mm -hmm. and I think the misconception is that it's a uh, one big program or, or one concept and it's it turns out that it's maybe just one day or one baby step to just start very small and trying to find out who your local farmers are and how you can make this work. That's why like just we're here today and it was just a one day event and it just seemed to fall into place and it felt good and felt right and they'd be willing to try it again I think. 
Um, who did someone contact you to get the ball rolling, or were did you contact them? How 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 did this here in Goochland get started? Uh, I guess uh, well, there was a conference in December, a farm to school conference that was co-sponsored by us and, and Virginia Cooperative Extension uh, and different groups put it together. And that was kind of the kickoff and it was a very popular um, conference uh, because it brought nutrition directors, it brought farmers, distributors, uh, doctors, everything, uh, kind of what would, what would one look like? And they had the na uh, representative from the National Farm to School Program and she talked about what other communities are doing. And then I introduced myself as the state coordinator, uh, basically just talked about the big picture of how it started here without, uh, w with just the website, which we I call eFarmony because it's kind of a dating service. It basically sets up the, it, the farms and the distributors and the schools. And right now, if you go on our website, you'll see the, there's a huge demand in the school. We, it represents about 324,000 students in Virginia. And to date, we only have about 12 farms up there. So we're hoping to get more farmers to recognize the potential of this program. And it, there's no obligation. It's just, like I said, it's just kind of a, a who's where and who's interested right now. So since I'm just beginning to learn about this, um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the program? Um, or if someone's watching the program, how, what they might want to do to get, to see if they could get the ball rolling in their locality? To me, I love the grassroots um, effort of this. And, and I get calls frequently from a mother of a student in school who's gone to lunch with her child and thinks well maybe we could take more of an active role or they've heard of farm to school so when they call up that's somebody who's interested and so I usually encourage them to put a kind of a group together and I'd be willing to come out and talk to them and share what we've learned here today at Goochland or what they've done in Williamsburg and Shenandoah Valley and that's really how it starts and it starts just the, the fact that you're getting these people in the same room talking and maybe there's already an ag event or an, another event that they could um, work into a farm to school program. So it's just that simple and we're here to just offer resources and like today every day every time I go to these um, programs I just walk away with so much more knowledge and kind of more excited about the program and the potential for agriculture in Virginia. The program was originally um, formed to help address childhood obesity and also to support uh, small-scale direct uh, farmers. So I think that those are the two key objectives to the program. And I also like the beauty of the fact that the seasonality, because many of Many of the, much of the produce grown in Virginia is during the summer months, so those are the key months for production, where the farm to school has the opportunity to extend seasons. And there's plenty of, you know, different crops or different greenhouses, hydroponics, high tunnels. So the opportunity for farms and agriculture to extend the season is, is something that I think is very encouraging. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks. for asking. Here I am again with um, Mr. Austin, who is principal of the Randolph Elementary School. Um, we had sweet potatoes grown locally, served in your cafeteria today. What did you think? I thought it was fabulous. The kids uh, had lots of good things to say. Um, one of the uh, best pictures of the day came from a young man that was, uh, had his fork ready to go. I guess I should say spork <laughs> because we don't have regular forks. Uh, but I heard great comments from the teachers, from the, uh, from the student body. Um, and then, of course, I had some myself, and they were delicious. Oh, good. Was there a problem getting this uh, farm-to-school program brought here to Randolph? No, not at all. Because of our size in Goochin County, we really... Um, we're able to utilize resources, I think, a little more efficiently than bigger school systems. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of dealing with 45 schools agreeing, we had five schools. And so that made a big difference in getting this program lifted off the ground. And then we have a, a nice grassroots 
communication system with our blogs and with uh, you know teacher uh, type of communication that's going home, uh, like a, a weekly newsletter. And so the kids really knew what was happening very quickly. And that that's usually the hardest piece about getting a new program is is the communication to parents. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it was very very seamless. Good. Do you was there an increase today on lunches that were bought? Do you know? I haven't seen the numbers, but it did look like a much longer line and fewer kids with their lunch boxes at the table. So I'm interested to see. I would say there was definitely an increase. And is Randolph planning to continue this program on? Most definitely. We've already planned out April and May uh, and then really looking forward to next year because um, with any new program, you know, you get a, a good splash when you jump into the pool, but it's what happens after the splash goes down that really makes a program work. Mm -hmm. And uh, next year, I think we're going to have, you know, again, once a month, if not more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, because of the community and the values in Goochland, I think it's a perfect opportunity for us to highlight our strengths along with the program strengths. Oh, nice. nice. Um, the one thing that I noticed was how um, it was pointed out by the nutritional direc director, and then I heard some teachers talking about tying in the food, eating locally, locally grown, uh, with various educational mm -hmm. pursuits. No doubt. It, it directly ties into a first grade standard, which is then reviewed in second and third grade. And so that's George Washington Carver. Um, he did a lot of work with sweet potatoes as well as peanuts. And so it ties directly to the curriculum. And whenever we can make that come to life, it becomes an experiential learning experience, which has more power. So, uh, and one of my second grade teachers used the materials provided through the program and this morning that was her morning work and so those kids were very excited uh, to come and learn more and to really display what they had learned this morning so it, it really was a good culminating activity for those guys. Nice. Is there anything else that you can think of that you might want us to know that I haven't asked you about? Not that I can think of I just think it was a it was a great day for our cafeteria and certainly one that we'll talk about for for days to come <laughs> till mm -hmm. next time huh? exactly <laughs> till next month with the beef <laughs> exactly yeah yeah the <clears throat> fact that you're not doing vegetables and you're doing organic beef mm -hmm. I think is really spectacular mm -hmm. and, and it, it's also one that's readily available in the local area which most people don't know about because we're right on the suburb of, of suburb line of Richmond in the metro Richmond area and most people don't feel like uh, you know dairy and beef are very close to Richmond but they're right there on the outside so it's a good advertising I think it's a good networking uh, opportunity for our local farmers I do mm -hmm. nice. Well, thank you so much. You're very Thanks welcome. Thank you for thank coming you. to school. All right. Well, that was fascinating, seeing the kids learn where their food came from and interact in the special Farm to the School food program. Thank you, Nancy, for that special report. We'd like to also give a special thanks today to Channel 21 of Culpeper County, who assisted in today's production. Thank you again for joining us for Meet the Farmer TV. For additional information and extended versions of this program, visit our website, www.meetthefarmer.com. Did you try the sweet potatoes? Did you like them? You did? Have you all tried the sweet potatoes? Did you like them? Were they sweet? No. The preceding program was made possible by Planet Earth Diversified, Melee Productions, and Leslie P. Jenkins Photography and Graphic Design, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture.